Yo, what's up guys? It's Tat. And Behavior today put out a developer update where they're updating their year seven roadmap. And there's some pretty cool stuff here that makes me really excited for the future of the game and especially for the next mid chapter. And I wanted to quickly go over it with you guys here today in case you haven't read it. And if you have read it, you probably want to see what my thoughts are on it. So I'm going to scroll down here. And the first is Blood Web Improvements, which is just fantastic, quite honestly. Um, <laughs> now blood webs are going to be a little bit faster, so you can spend blood points quicker. Um, we don't know exactly what the whole kind of improvement set that they're looking to do, but uh, spending blood points right now is a pain in the ass. So I'm assuming that this is going to just make spending blood points a little bit less time consuming. Uh, as they say here, it's going to be easier and faster, so that's cool. Uh, some survivor bot changes. So basically, you can now tell your bots in your custom games what perks they are going to be using. So if you want your bots to all use Dead Hard or Iron Will or Circle of Healing or something, they'll be able to do that. So you can test certain killers against certain perk builds and so on. So that's going to be nice. They are also adding in map rotation. So if you are playing Dead by Daylight and you've ever found that you play the same map over and over again, basically they're going to be doing some cool math that will make it so that when you do play on a map such as Dead Dog Saloon, uh, you'll actually have an incredibly low chance of playing on that map twice in a row. So if you've ever had Bad Ham Free School three or four times in a row like I have, that will never happen ever again. You'll get it once and if someone plays a map offering, you will go there. But otherwise, the map uh, will be put basically at the end of the queue. And so the game will try and find a map that everyone hasn't played on. And uh, will prioritize, for example, a cold tower or, you know, an auto haven map like Wrecker's Yard instead. So that's nice. They also have made it so that there's better accessibility in the game. So for people who are hard of hearing or, you know, have impaired hearing, uh, you'll actually be able to see a visual indicator of how close the killer is. Uh, I'm going to assume that this works like Dead by Daylight Mobile, where you have like a, an actual heartbeat on screen inside of your survivor. Uh, I think that would probably be the easiest way for them to do it. Uh, but they might do something on the HUD as well. As we know, current Spine Shield does have a, a little round indicator to tell you how close the killer actually is from you. Which is cool. And uh, it just makes the game more accessible for people who need it. And yes, uh, for those of us who are not in, uh, have hearing impaired uh, disabilities, uh, we can turn it off, which is great. Uh, they're also going to be doing an, an update to uh, some maps. So I'm assuming we're going to get Red Forest and the Swamp maps uh, in the next mid-chapter, or maybe even in the very next patch, which would be a chapter. Uh, that's also very, very appreciated, and I cannot wait. Hopefully, we see uh, some map updates as well, as we need a balance change uh, to the Garden of Joy map and a few other maps in the game still need some balance tweaks, but I do think that this is a step in the right direction and I am excited to see what's happening next. And we also have a perk update, uh, which confirmed Eruption. <laughs> There's a little gimmick here. Um, eruption is guaranteed to be getting changed, but also uh, a few other perks. We don't exactly know which ones, but if I were to guess, Dead Hard would probably be on there, as well as Call of Brian. Maybe a few others, such as Circle of Healing. Hopefully they don't do you know, go too hard on Circle of Healing because I do really love the perk and I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. But, you know, hopefully they do make some changes to a whole bunch of different perks and also bring some perks that nobody uses into the the roster, like Predator or Bloodhound, for instance, you know, Slippery Meat, something something interesting, something new. Uh, but there is going to be another meta shakeup coming very, very soon. It won't be as large as 6.1, but it will be addressing some common complaints about the current meta. So that's nice. And uh, last but not least, actually very much least, they're just basically doubling down on their FOMO, which is fear of missing out and saying that we are keeping limited time cosmetics, that they will be, you know, it will continue to be a thing where basically uh, if you don't buy a cosmetic within a certain time period, it's gone and it will come back a year later, uh, which is just cringe. It's just really dumb, uh, especially them retroactively going back and making different uh, cosmetics um you know like limited time which i don't like that but here's a list of literally everything that's going to be limited time which is just really cringe to me i i don't know why we're doing this uh but yeah that's it those are my thoughts 
on the new dev update and a rundown of what you uh, can expect for the next few months. And I am super, super excited about this. Honestly, this last patch has just reinvigorated my my excitement for the game, as you could probably tell uh, with all the HUD changes and everything and just the balance and the game just feels so much better to play right now. Uh, archives are great. Rift is great. Survivor in general just feels so much better to play. And so I'm hoping that uh, in the next chapter and the next mid chapter further addresses these things. So that's it for me. I wish you all the best and have a great day.